Hello, I'm Ron Daly. I'm the Strategic Partner Lead for the Kentucky Valley Educational Cooperative, uh, a co-op of 23 school districts in uh, Eastern Kentucky, and I'm here with Danny Vance, who is a uh, recent hire through KVAC as a consultant, and he's our career and technical education lead. And Danny has a great deal of experience in career education and vocational education. So Danny, tell us a little bit about how you got started and why this is your pathway. Well, I guess it would go back to where I graduated high school. Actually, I took a vocational class in high school, took auto mechanics while in high school at Morgan County. And then I chose to go into the electrical field so I took electrical tech at Morgan State University for two years, got an associate degree in that. So I guess I've always uh, liked the hands-on approach to, to an occupation, as I guess you could say. And then uh, I got out of college and did some electrical work. And uh, then also my dad had trucks, started driving a truck part-time. And I liked that real well. And then an opportunity came along to teach truck driving school down at Mayo. And uh, I applied to that job and got it. And uh, so that let me apply what I'd already learned, you know, as on the workforce, in the work field. And, uh, and I really liked that. So uh, as a teacher down there, I taught three years and really enjoyed that, that job, but it was limited uh, benefits, I guess you could say. So I chose to switch over and, and teach electricity, which brought me back to my original uh, education. And I taught electricity and electronics for 18 years. And then I had an opportunity to become an administrator and I took that path for the last eight years of my career. So I had 29 years invested in uh, career and tech ed. You, you know, you mentioned Mayo Tactical School mm -hmm. and uh, I remember when um, Lyndon Johnson came and visited Eastern Kentucky and I guess it was like 64 in that mm -hmm. period. That was one of the visits. He made the famous visit at Frank Fletcher's home uh, there in Martin County, you know, talking about poverty in the region, but then they went to see some successes for the training that was going on in the vocational school at that time in Paintsville. That was a really nice school. It still is. I mean, it's still a nice place to go to school. And uh, But back in the day in uh, 89 to 92 is when I was there, and you couldn't find a place to park on that campus. It was amazing at the education that was going on there and the opportunities that was provided for those students. Well, you've been at very, we, uh, we used to call them vocational schools, mm -hmm. and then I guess probably in the 90s, late 90s, it changed with the area technology centers. Right. And then you had the consolidation of your community colleges with the vocational schools. Mm -hmm. And so a place like Hazard Community College then became Hazard Community and Technical College as they incorporated the Hazard Vocational School. Right. So you are part of that transition, I guess. Right. Right. We still worked hand in hand with those schools after that transition. It was, I think it probably was a more smooth transition in the early days because our curriculum aligned, it still aligns, but it's, uh, it's, it doesn't seem to be as seamless as it was in those days. Uh, we actually had a lot of kids back in the earlier days that could uh, get out of a semester or two of classes about what they'd already taken in the high school level, and that still happens today. But it's, uh, that change at the college level, has, uh, it's a little different than what it used to be. Yeah. Both have their benefits. I've had a chance to be around the region a lot around the state, and I know, Danny, you have a a great reputation for uh, for what you've accomplished. I think I first came in contact with you. Were you, you were in Letcher County, yeah, didn't you? Yeah. So talk about what you did at that uh, uh, at the ATC Area Technology right. Center. I had an opportunity to go to work over there as administrator in Letcher County. I guess it's 2010, and uh, they were uh, Barbara Ison uh, was principal then, and she was retiring. And you know, I don't know if you know Barbara, but she was she's the best. You can't uh, beat what Barbara has accomplished in vocational yeah. education. She uh, worked for years and years to get the monies to uh, build a new vocational school at Letcher County. And uh, so at, when I was hired, actually I hired in July and they did groundbreaking on that building in August. And uh, I was a big part of, uh, uh, along with that build of that school to actually see it go up from the, from the dirt to the finished product. And we actually had school one year in that building. And uh, that was a great opportunity for me to be part of that project, to see that school uh, be opened up and, and have kids go to school there one year. And then I. I elected then to transfer back to Knott County and uh, spend my last five years as administrator there. But that's a great facility in Letcher County if you haven't seen that school. Yes. What is the value of career and technical education, the vocational schools? So from what you've seen right now, it's very hot because 
uh, so many people with bachelor's and master's degrees don't have jobs, mm -hmm. and then there's so many jobs that are not fulfilled simply because uh, employers can't find the people with the technical skills. So what is the value of a technical education? Well, you're talking to the, I'm kind of one-sided here because I am strictly, I'm all for technical education. And you know, I go to meetings where we have academic people on the other side of the table and we're talking to academics and then I'm sitting on this side of the table. And my thing to, the, to those people are on the vocational side, I, I use the word vocational. You know, we got the best game in town because we take kids and we give them the hands-on experience. And while we're doing the hands-on experience, we're actually teaching academics too. It may, it's a, maybe a different way than they do in the academic side of the, of the scheme. But uh, I think it's more effective to teach the hands-on approach and then teach those academic skills along with that. Students, most students can learn better that way, I feel. Plus, it also sets them up for a career. Uh, not only, they're learning the trade, you know, while those kids are in vocational school, they're actually learning a trade that they can leave there and go to work and make good money, and the jobs are there. Plus, they get the dual credit if they want to go into college, they have that opportunity also. But I think when you take young high school kids that may don't, they don't want to sit in a classroom all day long, we give them the opportunity to go out in these shops and actually uh, hook up lights and switches or change brakes on a car or change tires or diagnose an electro electronic problem with a car or build a tiny house from the ground up in one year. You know, those, those, those uh, opportunities can't be matched, I don't think, at, at some of the academic levels where we can take kids from uh, the academic side of it through all the hands-on experiences they can learn and actually set them up for a career. Yeah, I've seen so many students that are very bored with what's going on in class. Somehow their mind just doesn't that work that way. They're very intelligent, but they prefer that hands-on experience. Right. And I think it's, again, I'm, I'm biased here, but I think it's the most effective way to teach most of the people. There's some students that would learn otherwise, but I think the majority of the people learn by doing it. They want to do it. They want to see it done. They want to do it. And I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's an applied learning that can be uh, used for many, many years down the road and, and open up a lot of doors for careers for those kids. And then if you have those technical skills, and then instead of just working for somebody you, uh, you want to work for yourself, mm -hmm. then you can take those additional classes, get that additional training and to be entrepreneurial, how to run your own business, so uh, do that type of thing. Absolutely. You know, I bet if you check around your local community, most of those people who have those small business, say the plumbing business, the electrical business, even the hardware store, they've probably got a hands-on background somewhere down their, down their lifetime. And that's, that's carried through with them and prompted them to pursue those careers in those fields. Well, Danny, you are part of a really exciting initiative here at uh, KVAC, uh, the Kentucky Valley Educational Co-op, the Tiny House Project, and uh, it's got another name with it. So describe what that project is. Okay, the other name for it is called Build It Forward, whereas uh, several schools in the KVEC service area had an opportunity to get a $15,000 grant, and then that grant could be used to purchase a trailer to start the project. Then the students, along with the instructors, would get together and agree on a design, materials list, and so on to build this tiny house, and then that trailer's rolled in in August, and they start applying all the work they've done beforehand with the design and they actually build this tiny house from the ground up and uh, you know it incorporates the design the framework the electrical the plumbing the heating and air conditioning the roofing the walls the floor it, everything is included in that project and when you start that in august and finish it by the end of the year that's a great project for kids i've been in education for 29 years technical education and i've never seen a project as good as that one because it incorporates all the areas that a student would need to know to, to do those areas. But uh, then that tiny house is auctioned at the end of the year, and then the proceeds of the money from that auction go right back to the, to the school to build next year. So it's a, it's a self-sustaining grant, and it's the greatest idea that I've seen in 29 years of education. And I think KVEC has to be commended for that because Desi Bowen, Bowling and uh, Jeff Hawkins that came up with that idea and that concept and secured those monies for those grants. It's just, a, it's provided a great opportunity for kids in this service area that they never had before. All the projects before that were small projects and uh, there may be a little of this or a little of that, but this project puts it all in, in one project. And I it's a great opportunity for these schools to be part of that. And the, I've seen the students with that sense of pride or whenever I've interviewed mm -hmm. them to know that they built these houses and I think 
uh, one student described themselves as like, you know, they've seen athletes in the school who've won the big right. game and they had that swag going down the hallways. Well, these students had that swag because Absolutely. they've accomplished something remarkable. Absolutely. You know, and uh, what I did as administrator of Knott County the last couple of years, we built the tiny house over there. We would pull that finished product down to the high school to just let all the other kids in the school to see what those vocational kids were capable of. And yeah, the students take a lot of pride in that project. You know, they, they a lot of them will tell you they put blood and sweat into those projects. You know, they'll mash a finger or whatever. But um, to, to be able to roll that project down there completed and let the uh, uh, all the students from the high school walk through it and actually see what those kids are capable of. And, uh, and there, there's a lot of pride that comes along with it. And each school then, it's almost like a little competition. There's, it's not really a competition, but in the student's mind it is. It's like each school wants to be better than the other schools. So they, they want to come up with their own unique ideas to where theirs is unique from the other schools. And then they take pride in the finished product. And it's great for those kids. Well, and anybody who comes by and visits and tours these tiny houses, they're amazed. I mean, you know, whether it's Bill and Melinda Gates, whether it's Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook, Absolutely. whether it's Howard Schultz from uh, uh, Starbucks, mm -hmm. whether it's the Commissioner of Agricultural, Ryan Quarles, uh, whether it's Attorney General Andy Bashir, whenever any of these <clears throat> folks have come and looked at it, they are, they are just amazed mm -hmm. at the quality of the craftsmanship. Well, and I guess, you know, and all those people have done this. They, they've seen these tiny houses in person. Um, but it just goes along with what we're doing here. It's like we know the students of Eastern Kentucky are capable of these amazing uh, achievements. And uh, when you roll that tiny house out, completed, uh, it just shows the work and craftsmanship these kids are capable of doing. And it, it really, it, ref it should reflect to everybody what, what the possibilities are, are here for these students and uh, what their capabilities are. And we're just proud of what they do. And, uh, and the fact that they take this thing and design it and come up with all the ideas, it's amazing. Yeah, but you know, and you've just raised a very interesting point there. Uh, what these kids have done, these young adults have created almost a monument, something tangible you can see. You can win uh, an international uh, competition mm -hmm. or a state competition and have a trophy or something but there's something about that actual physical structure that's just a, a higher level of achievement mm -hmm. oh yeah you know I was at one of the schools recently I delivered actually helped deliver all the trailers to the schools and uh, when I delivered to one school they started talking a little bit about their design there they had already had their ideas and their plans in order and um, they started talking a little bit about it and they said, oh, let's, we don't want to let our secret out. They're, they were afraid I would tell their secret. So they take a lot of pride in making theirs their own. And uh, it's just amazing to watch these kids and how they grow from the beginning of that project to the end of that project. And, and it's interesting when you go in and you watch the, the teachers as the mentors and then you watch the boys and the girls mm -hmm. working together doing stuff and well, t tell us something about the community commitment. I know in Knott County in particular, mm -hmm. uh, that very first tiny house, how some community members from other counties even right. contributed. Yeah, we get uh, over there, we had a uh, Henry Madden from Letcher County. Uh, Henry Henry knows wood. Henry goes to the woods and cuts the trees down. He brings it in, he processes the wood, he dries it. Uh, he knows how to cut the wood to make it look its best. and. Uh, we had a great opportunity to, to, to get Henry to come in and talk to our students about wood. He donated a lot of the wood. The first year we built, uh, all those cabinets were hand built, red oak lumber out of Letcher County. And uh, Henry practically gave us that lumber. The next year he did give us a lot of lumber. And uh, But other than that, his presence to help around these kids and talk to those kids about what he does with wood, it just opens their minds about the possibilities that, that could be out there. But when you get support like that from your community, that's great. And then have those people come in and actually help your kids work on their projects. And then we got a lot of help from the local hardware stores. They would have stuff on clearance or they practically give us stuff to help us with the project. Otherwise we couldn't have had a quality build like we had that first year with just $15,000. And then, uh, so we auction them off via the holler where right. people are watching this particular show. And then uh, what happens to that money again? Well, that money comes back to the schools. The original $15,000 grant goes to the school totally, and then 80% of anything over 15,000 that it sells for goes back to the schools. So each year, 
the schools like, for example, Knott County or Phelps or Lee County, uh, those schools were in the first year. So as their tiny house progressed each year, they got more money to work with each year so they could have a better build every year. So therefore it sells for a little more every year. So that's what we'd like to see here. We'd like to see this thing grow to where students could do anything they want to do with these tiny houses. Right now they're limited on that budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, if we could sell these things for a little more money, they get more money to work with and they could do more with the next tiny house. So, uh, but for Desi and Jeff here at KVEC to have the, the forethought and the initiative to do this, to, to secure this grant was just amazing. Uh, or like I said earlier, this possibility wouldn't even exist for these kids. And I know two years or a year ago, uh, you had someone <clears throat> buy a house from Maryland, so on the Eastern coast, and then somebody took one to Pismo Beach right. to the western coast, well, coast to coast, coast to coast, and uh, and then this time you had a, a, a just a military service man mm -hmm. in the Middle East that bought one. He's going to be moving into Virginia. Right. Uh, and then uh, last year also you had uh, the Harlan Fiscal Court buy three of these houses mm -hmm. because up by their Hope Recovery Center, their drug addiction addiction center, and they put in these people in transitional housing mm -hmm. and had a little community village there. So uh, there's some remarkable things happening to these tiny houses. There are, and it opens up a lot of opportunities for people, you know, like veterans. We've talked to the veterans about some options they may have and uh, working with them on some tiny houses. So I think this thing, of course, it's been a movement that's been around a while, but I think people are beginning to see the, the opportunities that do exist here with the efficiency of, the, of these homes and, and then how you could, they could be ro relocated from place to place. You know, they're mobile. You can hook them to a pickup and take them wherever you want to go. And uh, I think you add all that together and it, it creates an opportunity that's, uh, that's going to grow and grow because people see the value in these tiny homes and the possibilities that they can provide for people, say low income or, or veterans or even people who just want to live a, a simple lifestyle. So they, it, it's a great opportunity to be part of this project. Let's circle back and close the program out here with, what is it that you think that maybe the general public doesn't quite understand the value are, uh, the value of, or what's going on in your area techno technology centers and vocational schools and vocational education at all? Well, I think people are starting to understand more than they used to uh, because of projects like the, like the tiny house. Um, some people who haven't been in the area technology centers or the CTCs, the career tech centers, the locally operated vocational schools, um, a lot of times there's a misconception that maybe they don't do anything. They maybe build birdhouses or they just go in there and do hardly anything at all. But I think if you were to visit those schools, you could see the actual work that goes on in those schools and the learning that's, that's going on in those schools and the opportunities that are being provided to those students in the schools. It's, it's way and above what most people perceive. And I think a couple of years ago when they, uh, uh, the state came up with the initiative, the career uh, or college readiness, you know, and it put us equal on the table. In other words, you could be career ready and be counted as equal as you are as be college ready. So I think that initiative brought us to the table as being equally um, uh, qualified or uh, have opportunities for students in the technical school as you did in the academic school. And I think, and I think that really boosted where we needed to be. And uh, what I would suggest anybody do who, who wonders what happens in these schools, just stop by and go in and go walk into the shop and see the work that's being done. You'd be amazed at the equipment they have in these schools. You know, we, uh, there at Knott County, we bought an alignment rack. The last year I was there, I think it was $25,000. Um, we've got top of the line equipment in a lot of these schools and the kids are getting the hands-on experience with this equipment and then you you throw in projects like the tiny house or uh, with our IT classes are leaving their A plus certified you know there, there are certifications in every one of these classes that let that student leave that school with a marketable credential that can be used nationwide you know every one of the classes have certifications nurse aides uh, come out of the health health science department or even the pharmacy tech or now they're doing phlebotomy in a lot of the classes or medical assisting you know the certifications that's just one program every program in these schools offers those credentials and it's just a great opportunity for those kids to to go to those schools and earn those credentials and be able to leave with a marketable 
uh, training and knowledge that they can hit the workforce with if they choose to go that route. Okay, well, Danny, thank you so much. We've been talking to Danny Vance, who's a career and technical education lead at the Kentucky Valley Educational Cooperative.